Hello there. Today, we have the Lenovo Legion 5 15 IRX 10 in front of us. This one is also known as Lenovo Legion 5i 15 Gen 10. To get this thing open isn't rocket science. Let me show you how to do it. First, undo the 10 Phillips head screws that secure the bottom. The ones on the back and middle are longer than the lower four ones. Your next job is to pry one of the rear corners with a thin plastic tool. Try to slightly pop up each side step by step while sliding the tool. Don't push too hard around the Ethernet connector. On the inside of the bottom plate, there is a thermal pad dedicated to the M.2 slot that is close to the wireless card. This laptop comes with the default 60 watt hour battery pack, though you can choose a larger 80 watt hour unit for extended use away from a power outlet. To remove it, disconnect the battery by pulling its connector towards the front of the laptop, then unscrew the two Phillips heads on top. The battery life ain't ideal. The smaller 60 watt hour unit powers the notebook for a bit more than three hours of 4K video playback. Lift the upper side of the battery and gently slide it towards the cooling. The Wi-Fi card is replaceable, which is great. A large metal shroud, secured by four screws, covers the memory area in one of the SSD slots. This plate also includes a thermal pad underneath for the other NVMe slot. In total, you get a pair of Gen 4 M.2 slots that support both 2242 and 2280 units, thanks to built-in standoffs for both SSD form factors. Two RAM slots are available for memory expansion, According to Lenovo, the 1365HX machines like ours are limited to 4,800 MHz speed, while the other devices with more powerful CPUs rely on 5,600 MHz RAM sticks. Interestingly, the 1365HX chip officially supports up to 192 GB of memory. While this Lenovo laptop might be able to handle more RAM than stated, we haven't tested that ourselves. Unfortunately, the RAM modules aren't cooled by thermal pads. The cooling looks pretty good for a budget machine. It boasts a pair of big fans, one long, thick heat pipe shared between the CPU and the GPU, 
and a smaller one for each chip. The thermal system has a duo of top-mounted heat sinks, two large cooling plates above the two chips, and a third one that also cools the chipset. Let's take out the cooling. For starters, the fan connectors should be disconnected. Then work your way around the screws on the side of the fans and the six ones that fix the main part of the cooling. Raise the bottom of the cooling and carefully detach the heat sinks from the rear exhaust. With the cooling detached, we can now clearly see the CPU die, the GPU die surrounded by its memory chips, and the chipset. Check out our full review at techpowerup.com.